Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Gewale from Queen's University, Kingston, Canada. And today I want to discuss um, over something that we rarely discuss in oncology, which is the placebo effect. Uh, placebo effect in oncology, this is actually based on a research that we published in my own experience, because sometimes I get patients who come to me and say, I have heard all bad things about chemotherapy. I do not want to undergo chemotherapy. I want to take my chances. Um, and I have heard that, uh, you know, my relative, my cousin, whoever, they also had cancer and they did not undergo chemo, but they are still living there and their cancer has disappeared. So, you know, I did not always, I did not want to just discredit their experience. Maybe there is some truth to it that I do not know about. So I thought, okay, maybe we should, we should uh, look at what percent of patients actually have their cancer shrink without undergoing any chemotherapy or, or any targeted therapy, immune therapy, any medical intervention, just on their own by, by doing nothing? Is there, is there any way? So one of the good ways to look, at, to look into this is to look at the response rate of placebo in randomized trials of cancer drugs. Because placebo as a monotherapy, you would not expect it to shrink cancer. It might improve your quality of life due to placebo effect. It might have some improvement in subjective measures, pain or whatever, but you will not expect solid tumors to shrink without undergoing any treatment from placebo alone. So we looked into uh, we looked into several randomized trials and we looked at the response rate from placebo in these trials and we pulled uh, the results and we found something very interesting. What we found is 1% of the patients do have some response with placebo, which is very intriguing. And there are a couple of studies in the past that show that up to 2% of patients might respond with placebo. And this is placebo monotherapy. It's not chemotherapy plus placebo. It's not drug X plus placebo. And it's not a maintenance therapy that the patient got chemotherapy first and then received placebo. No, just pure placebo monotherapy upfront um, or in subsequent lines. Um, but there are up to 2% of patients who are responding um, with placebo monotherapy, which is intriguing. Um, and we also try to look at how many of them just have their cancer melt away or disappear, uh, which is called complete response. And it was 0%. Uh, in terms of absolute number, it was not exactly zero because four out of almost 4,000 patients did have a complete response. But when you pull the data, it's, it's, uh, it's nearly, it's almost zero. Uh, four out of 4,000. It's not zero out of 4,000, it's four, but it's not, uh, when you pull it, it's almost zero percent. So what, what, does, what do this information tell us? I wanted to highlight a couple of things. One, is that we have seen several patients who come to us and say, I don't want uh, your treatment. I, I'll take my chances. I have heard that uh, sometimes cancer can just disappear or melt away. Now what, I can, now what we can say, because now we have data, is that the chances of the cancer just disappearing, completely disappearing, without undergoing any treatment is zero. It will not happen. Four out of 4,000, it's almost next to a miracle. It's not a chance that that uh, we would be suggesting anyone to take. Uh, we do not need to discredit anyone's experience. Yes, there were four people out of four thousand who who had that experience, but is that an odd that you are willing to take? No, four out of four thousand is too small an odd. Um, in terms of any response, partial response, it's one to two percent. Again, that's that does not sound very encouraging number. But at least now we have a data to, to tell them that, okay, whatever you are saying might be right. Um, I, I can validate your experience with data because there are one to two percent of patients who will experience some response, but this is pretty low number, one to two percent. Um, and, you know, uh, so this will help us in an informed shared decision making and hopefully persuade people not to skip chemotherapy altogether in pursuit of alternative treatments. And so that's that's one thing. But the second thing is, um, I think we need to think about why are there some patients who are responding without treatment, and does understanding their biology, does interrogating these these patients, uh, 
uh, in further detail provide us some insight because these are valuable resources. These patients who had complete response on placebo, I think we need to, like in future trials, when we find something like this, we need to, uh, you know, interrogate the data more. We need to look into the cancer biology more. We need to um, ask, uh, we need to get the details of the treatment and, and uh, everything that they have done to understand this phenomena uh, better. Uh, this is a missed opportunity. And the third thing actually is, uh, in some of these trials, we found that the response rate from placebo in a couple of these trials were, were, were quite high. It was almost, you know, in some trials, there was almost a 20% response rate from placebo in one or two trials, which is quite astonishing. But it has a regulatory implication because we have also seen that some of our new drugs are being approved on the basis of a response rate alone when that response rate is only 12%, 14%. We are approving drugs with a response rate of 12 or 14 percent when we know that in some of the trials, even placebo can produce a response rate of 20 percent. So I think uh, offering response based, uh, offering approval based on response rate of 12 percent, 14 percent is, is is scary, almost unethical, I would say, because I, I, I joked on Twitter one day saying that um, we might get a drug approved called placebo mumab because even placebo had some response. Um, but as I mentioned, complete response with placebo well, is almost zero. So whatever complete response we see, it is from the drug. So I think it's better to offer approval on the basis of complete response rates and not just an overall response rate. Overall response rate can be misleading. We have to offer approval on the basis of complete response rate. You know, we have to define the, the response rate uh, benchmark for approval before the trial is run. Because as I said, we have certain drugs that are approved on the basis of 14, 16% response rate. How low is, is low enough? How good is good enough? Is is 14% response rate in 20 people uh, good? Is is 20% response rate in 200 people good uh, enough for approval? So that has to be clearly defined. But as I said, I think we have to stick to complete response rate instead of overall response rate, if we were to allow any approval based on responses. But I think the better thing would be to do a randomized trial and compare the response rate in the two groups rather than just response rate in a single arm trial uh, for accelerated approval, and then follow the same trial uh, for overall survival in the future for confirmatory uh, approval, which is uh, exactly what uh, uh, authors from FDA have written in one of the recent uh, New England Journal perspective piece as well. Um, so th those are my thoughts about uh, response rates from placebo in oncology. Thank you.